Thank you very much. Ni hao, everyone. Or in Sibolai, shalom lekulam. So I always find it joyful going back to the old good time when I was a kid in school. Because I was pretty excellent back then. But mostly in causing great troubles to my teachers. <laughs> I remember in a computer class I had no choice but formatting the entire school server, completely deleting it, just before I had to take a test on it. They're still looking for the guilty one, by the way. But today, I want to talk to you about education and about shaping the educational mindset of our children. We all know our educational system is an informational-based one. As we try to squeeze as much information as possible into our children's memory, and I find myself wondering, are we in the right direction? Do any of you, the people sitting in the crowd, feel comfortable about your schooling experience? Well, I came here to suggest today that it is much more important in develop uh, children's curiosity about engineering and to equip them with the engineering set of skills to satisfy that curiosity that is based on creation and innovation rather than just let them sit tired, frustrated in the class, waiting for the lesson to get end, and probably forget the entire information by the time they are leaving the school gate. But in order to do this, I would like to go back in time, 10 years ago, to the time when I first discovered what do people really mean when they say that children have an extraordinary capacity. You probably heard this sentence before. In my case, it was when a six-year-old girl approached to me and explained about what a centrifugal force is. Now, after a few years, I know she was referring to the centripetal force, which is one of the forces in classical mechanics. But anyway, as she explained, immediately it hit me. Is there anything that a six-year-old kid can understand about physics that I cannot understand, not even during my 20s? And by that time, I realized that probably something wasn't so optimized about my schooling experience. And this is exactly the reason why a person like me, who always hated school, I hated to death school, and swore never to be an educator, ended up being just that, an educator, and even establishing an international company with a clear mission of showing kids the beautiful side of our engineering world. And there is a reason for that, because you see, Nowadays, prospects for the future are changing. And it is clear to all that opportunities for the younger generation today are changing as well. Just look on how many new professions were introduced to our world only in the past 20 years. Marketing communication managers, nanotechnologists, AI developers, DD drivers, and so on and so forth, you just name it. So what it basically means is that the things that our children must do today in their present in order to secure their prosperity in the future are changing as well, together with our world. And as the time passes by, it's more and more related to engineering. In addition, in the back of our mind, we also remember the industrial revolution consequences of many whom their profession just vanished very quickly from the, labor, from the labor market. Similarly now, with entering what I call the engineering era, the effect is going to be much stronger because as the time passes by, there are fewer and fewer tasks and services that a robot cannot do better than us human beings. Robots are making everything quicker. They're doing everything more precise. They can work for many hours, for many shifts. They never get tired. They never complain. If they get breaked, it's not so bad. They can relatively easily get duplicated or repaired. So what this development is basically mean is that soon, in the foreseeable future, we will see less and less from the current occupations that exist today. I'm talking about 20 million taxi drivers who are going to be replaced by automated transportation services. I'm talking about drones that will be delivering your pizzas. 
And even the old traditional occupations, such as bankers and insurance agents, are slowly, slowly going to be disappeared from our world. And it's all going shifting to engineering. And this is why it's so important to engage children from an early stage with engineering. So they can ask themselves, how can I be part of engineering? How can I manipulate engineering to my needs? And what you see here in the picture is a nine years old kid manipulating the elastic engineering for his need of shooting uh, ping pong balls. <laughs> for us, it's, uh, it doesn't make sense, but for them, they can play with it for hours until they get the concept behind um, electrical, engin uh, uh, electrical engineering, uh, coding engineering, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is what I've been doing in the past 10 years in the company that I've established called Young Engineers, where I'm using these kind of building blocks in order to expose children to the most important engineering subject, the subject of mechanical engineering, how basically we create machines, started from, starting from sewing machine to, uh, to bicycle, or electrical engineering, how to electrify the machines that we build. For example, how to take our ordinary bike and make them electrical bike. And coding engineering, what you see here is a coding blocks in order to put a brain into the machine, electrified machine that we built. Let's so show you some uh, example. What you see here is a crane. And this crane is being operated by this tiny motor. This is an 18.2 gram motor. And I'm going to use it in order to lift a 10 kilogram weight. It's like me carrying on my back 44,000 kilograms or 44 small family cars. You wanna see how it works? I'm gonna plug it very gently here. Right, and now it's working, slowly, but it's working. But this is not the most interesting thing about what you see here, because according to Archimedes, there is actually no limit to, the, to what this tiny little motor can lift. It can lift even the entire world. It's all a question of how much we convert the velocity of the motor into amount of work that it creates. So this way you can imagine how kids can imagine about the beautiful and incredible things that they can do with so little means. Just let their imagination work. So that was the building blocks of mechanical engineering. Moving ahead, I want to present to you the building blocks of electrical engineering. I'm holding in my hand a plastic injected brick. It's an ordinary plastic injected brick. But after it was injected, it was coated with chrome. And now it can conduct electricity. So what you see here is a form of electrical circuit. Okay, I'm gonna place it right here. I have a form of cir a circuit. This is the plus, this is the minus. And I'm gonna pick a battery block and place it right here. And now I'm gonna turn it on and pick a light. This is a light brick and place it right here. You see how easy it is. Now kids creating electrical, engi uh, electrical engineering circuits. And I can open the circuit and close it. Or I can use one of the smart switches that we developed. This is a sound switch. I'm gonna place it right here. And every time I make a sound, it turns on and off. And I can go crazy with it. I can even connect motors. So that was the building blocks of electrical engineering. Moving ahead. 
What is even more interesting is that if we combine the building blocks of mechanical engineering together with the building blocks of mechanical engineering together, and by adding a computing unit to it, we basically get a robot. And this robot can be programmed with these bricks that you see here, and we have it also here. These bricks called algobricks, a combination of algorithm and bricks. And it enables children to learn how to code much before they can even read. How it works, it has functions and parameters, just like in real code. Functions tell the robot what to do. For example, make a sound. And the parameter tells the robot how to do it. Make a sound of a car or another function. Stop. Stop what? Stop a motor. I have a brick with motor C mark on it. And then another brick on top of it with LED. So the, the robot can stop the motors, the movement, and the light on top of it. Let's see one example made by a four years old kid with these building blocks that you see here, okay? What the robot is basically going to do now is to walk uh, brick by brick. Starting with the first brick. This is a wait for a sensor event brick. And then there are two threads that are going to be operated in, in parallel. Starting from this one. Move two seconds forward and then rotate clockwise two times. This is one thread. The other thread is turn on a light in green and then turn on a light in red. It's going to happen in parallel. I'm going to hit the play. Now the robot, you see this brick is lighting up, waiting for my signal. I'm going to put my hand right here, moving two seconds forward, turning on green and red light while turning for two times. If you're using this kind of building blocks, children's curiosity about engineering is increasing dramatically. And many among our children today might become the next Newtons, the next Einsteins, the next innovators of tomorrow. And yes, I really believe that every child can be a creator or, innovat or an innovator. If we show them the way to do it, instead of showing them the way, to be afraid of it. Because you see, many people assume that hard studying is the key to a success. However, an overemphasizing on memorizing things leaves people fearful of challenges, unmotivated to learn, and therefore very vulnerable to failures. We want education to be fun, and we don't want to teach children all about the crazy concept of uh, mechanical or electrical or coding engineering. But what we do want to create is a positive association between engineering and something positive that happened in the child's life. Something that involved with creation, with innovation, and with success. Because basically, you cannot fail when you're playing with these bricks. It's so easy. In my humble opinion, bringing engineering to our children is the most crucial educational challenge that our world is facing today. And I believe that it should and can be addressed through the adoption of engineering studying in all of our educational system. That would make a much better future for our children. Thank you very much.